All right, guys, welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be talking about the Tesla motor car, the electric car. Um, what I wanted to, I, I don't know, I think a lot of people probably by now realize this in the winter is meh, I would say. The reason why I say that is because if you, ha if you know about lithium batteries at all, you'll know, actually any battery, really, they don't like to be cold. They don't like to be especially really cold. On an electric vehicle, when the battery is cold, it has more resistance and thus less energy can flow through it until it warms up, until it comes up to temperature. An ideal temperature, I, I mean, ideal temperature for lithium battery can vary, but let's just say it's between anywhere between 20 and 30 degrees Celsius. It likes to be warm, not hot. Uh, it likes to be warm, not cool, not cold. It wants to hover in that warm area. I have the uh, the Model 3 here and have woken up and I need to go do some work. I need to go visit a client. I charge it to about 80, not 85 to 90%-ish. But So as you can see, it has 397 kilometers of range at this time and it is plugged in. Do what's recommended as the battery is cold. It's been in the garage for overnight and you can't really see it here, I don't think. But can I zoom in on that? I'll do that. You can see the climate's like minus, it's like minus three degrees, I think, in the cabin at this point. Preheat this thing. So I turn on the heater on high, which is like 30 degrees Celsius or something. And I let it sit here for about 15, I think 15 to 20 minutes. Now, typically I would do this, uh, I would, I would, I would let it, heat up longer so what sucks about that is you know because the battery is so cold then you want to try to get it up to temperature like you know the warmer the battery is the better you do some preheating so this accomplishes two things it heats the cabin so when you get in it's nice and warm and it starts to allow the battery to uh, use energy and start to warm up but i don't know i kind of call bullshit on this a little bit because the amount of of, of power that the heater uses on that size of a battery, which is like a 75 kilowatt battery, isn't really gonna heat up the battery all that much. When you're talking three, four or five kilowatts on a 75 kilowatt battery, you're gonna have to have that heater running like all day or something before it really makes a difference. Anyways, I heat the cabin for about 15 to 20 minutes. We go to uh, inside the cabin. And we can see that from the time I did the preheating and when I got in the car, the battery is now showing 394 kilometers of available range, pretty much ready to depart right now. And this is where uh, we'll show you, so I'll show you sort of the consumption on route driving. And the first thing that, oops, let me bring this down. So the first thing that we'll note is from the house, uh, I have currently driven 33.8 kilometers and you can see that the battery here is reporting like 329 or something, 329. Sorry, I didn't have a good camera on me, but anyways, 329 or 325 kilometers. I've done 33.8 kilometers so far. My average consumption is 283 watt hours per kilometer. So that is pretty high. Uh, it's very actually very high because the battery is cold. Now you can't really see it because of the, uh, the quality of the camera here, but basically 325 kilometers on the battery meter and uh, we have done 33.8 kilometers. So if we go back, we started with 397 and after 33 kilometers, we have 323. So that math doesn't quite add up. But the problem is, is that this battery meter <clears throat> is sort of inaccurate, especially during uh, when the battery is cold and not up to temperature. And I don't know if you can see this, but on the left-hand side, the regen on the uh, battery, the regen, uh, the, cap the capturing of kinetic energy, you can't really see it here, but it's only about halfway, which means the battery is definitely still cold and uh, we're not able to regen the battery, use kinetic energy to regen the battery at 100%. And also the consumption is 283 watt hours per kilometer, which is very high. 
Temperature is minus six degrees Celsius. Very cold, battery no likey. All right, so now we've arrived, I think, at our destination. And as you can see, the battery gauge here is at 311 kilometers. And we have done 43.8. And going back to what we started, we started at 397. We went, we started at 397. We are currently sitting at 311, which means we have uh, used, well, according to the battery meter, 86 kilometers, but we've literally done half. We've done 43.8, and the temperature again here, minus seven, cold. Now, if we open up the, there's an energy meter here that you can open. So our, uh, first, before we get into that, our average watt hour per kilometer to our destination total trip is 271 watt hours per kilometer, which is pretty high. Uh, this gives a much more accurate uh, representation of what you can expect. It, here you can see this says projected, and you might not be able to see it, but this says projected range, 210, which would make a lot more sense than this 311. Like these two are 100 kilometers uh, skewed. And if we look at what we did here, we did about 50% of the 43 kilometers according to this battery meter. So this uh, is gonna be a better representation of what's possible because it's taking the last 25 kilometers here on the bottom, it's taking the last 25 kilometers here as an average and saying, based on your last 25 kilometers of driving and your driving style, which also includes environment and everything, you're looking more like 210 kilometers. So, <clears throat> started with 397 drove 43 and we are projected to have 210 210 plus 43 really gives us 250 kilometers total out of the battery from 90 ish percent so we have come back from the trip and i know this is like really blown out but hey you know what are you going to do? Uh, the battery is showing 206 kilometers of range. Now that is the battery meter. You can see I charge it up to about 90-ish percent, maybe 85, somewhere around there. And um, 226 kilometers. We did a total of 86 kilometers total. If we start from, we started, 94. And we do the math, 394. According to the battery gauge, we've used 168 kilometers, but we've only done 185, 86. So it's literally almost half. So we're getting about 50% uh, of what we should be getting in this temp in this climate here. And as you can see, we are still hovering about minus four. So it's between minus four and minus seven. So let's say the average temperature for the whole round trip was like minus five and a half or something. Uh, and our average uh, consumption for the whole trip is 253 watt hours per kilometer, which is still very hot here. If we open up the consumption meter here, you can see when we uh, got back home, this adjusted itself, this adjusted itself here on the projected range. And uh, it's saying that we're really only looking at 160 kilometers of projected range based on our driving style, environmental conditions and everything together. So that is a far cry from when we started, from where we started, 397. So let's do some quick math. So if we do the math on this, if we take the battery gauge, we started with 397, and we minus what we actually used, which is 86, that should give us 311 kilometers left on the, on the battery. Right now we're showing 226 on the battery gauge, but also we know that we can't trust this in this in this situation. So we have to slide over and look at the projected range, which is 160. So in theory, because we can't trust the battery gauge and we know how many kilometers we've driven and we know what our estimated projected range is, which is much, much more accurate than the battery gauge, we can say that we did a total of 160 let's we did a total of 86 kilometers plus let's say we do have 160 left of actual range that gives us 246 kilometers of real range total 
Now, this car is supposed to do 500 kilometers on a full charge. Uh, we only charged it to about 90-ish percent, maybe 85 or so. Um, but as you can see, this car in this climate, which is temperature and also the driving conditions to the destination and also the driving style to the destination, which was totally normal. Uh, I had, I didn't, uh, I didn't kill, I didn't kill it on the way back. Although it's, you know, for a little bit, I was trying to get the battery warmed up. Even when I got home, the battery wasn't fully up to temperature. I don't know if you can, you can't see it in the picture, but I'm still not at a hundred percent regen on the battery yet after 86 kilometers of uh, driving. So anyways, just an FYI there, if you're going to buy a Tesla and you live in an igloo, and if you live in a really cold climate and you drive a lot, then you're going to have to either anticipate charging much more often, which can be annoying because, you know, well, let's just say even if I was traveling 150 kilometers in this particular instance, like that's enough for that, like one way. So let's say I, I drove 150 kilometers one way on my return trip. I have to, I would have to charge. There's no way that you're going to risk getting stranded on the way back. That is something to keep into consideration. Yeah, the battery technology in the Tesla is really good. They're using really good chemistry. They're climatizing the battery as best as possible. But I would say that in the Model 3, uh, I know in the Model S and X, it actually has a battery heater. Whereas in the Model 3, I'm not exactly sure what's happening, but they don't have that same heater. So when it's plugged in, it's not really keeping the battery at a uh, nominal temperature. It's, uh, you know, it's going to be very, very cold. And uh, I'm surprised that uh, the snowflake didn't appear in the first picture. Um, but I also think that that is due to the fact that it is technically plugged in. So it wasn't cold enough where it wasn't cold. The, 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 the getting, having it, leaving it connected, plugged in when it's really cold is much, much better than uh, not having it plugged in. So something else I would recommend is if you do have one of these things and uh, it's winter time and it's really cold, you're going to have to just keep it plugged in all the time as much as possible because there is some he some heating of the battery that happens. I don't know how much. I don't think it's much at all uh, because the regen is so low. The regen is non-existent until the battery starts warming up. Anyways, thanks for watching. Talk to you next time.